Hello and welcome to now the third episode of How Does a Computer Work? A bottom-up explanation. Today we're going to be talking about binary. So, first of all, a little just where we are currently, which episode in a graph. And binary, first of all, why? even binary, why do you need to understand a whole new number system? First of all, every computer uses it. Every computer is running on binary. The um, one exception might be quantum computers, which kind of use binary, but also work a bit different than the standard binary, but I'm not going to pretend I understand any of that. Because if you think you understand quantum computers or quantum mechanics, then you definitely do not understand it because it is just that weird. Um, second thing, after you get used to it, it is actually quite easy to use, quite comfortable. You just need to kind of get to do it and kind of like understand the basics of it. And binary is the basis of logic calculation. We need to understand binary uh, ways of thinking, basically, to do logic, which will be in the next episode. First, how does binary work? It is a number system with the base 2. The base says how many different numerals we have, so how many different states. We have base 10 as humans. Most languages work with base 10. That's just basically 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 10 different type of numbers you have, un have until you jump to the next one, uh, the next digit, basically. The 0 is also counted. That's why 10. And the same is with binary. You have 0 and 1, and 1 plus 1 is 1, 0 in this case. As you see here, I kind of counted from 0 to 6 in binary and just wrote down the number according, like the same number but in base 10 next to it. It just it works like that. You start with zero, one, one zero, one one, one zero zero, and so on. Just continues with the same principle after that. Kinda works like base ten. Just you have way less numerals. You just have two zero and one. Yeah, and as you see, the numbers grow quite long, quite quickly, which is a bit annoying to deal with because you're gonna have really really long numbers after some time though most of the time you don't have to actually deal with that long numbers because your computer is going to do that for you you just need to get the computer to actually work with those numbers at the first place now first of all how do we translate to binary there's two variants how you can do that First off is the Horner variant. Horner is the guy who invented that, basically. It's an algorithm. What you do is you take the number and you modulo it by 2. Modulo is basically dividing by 2, but you don't use comma, like 0 point something you don't use the point like you don't use decimals after a point you just get a re like rest number just and in that case if you do modulo 2 the rest can only be 0 or 1 because there's that's how modulo 2 works so we start here with the example number 42 we divide 42 by 2 our rest is 0 we get 21 as our solution and then we just continue on and on with that until we get to zero. Zero modulo two, uh, one modulo two is zero with the rest of one by the way just so 
you don't get confused. And then if you write it down like this, we write the number so the most like the bottom number is the first digit in how we write it down. So it goes one, zero, one, zero, and so on. And now we get to the next variant, which I think for me or like for doing it as a human in your head is a bit easier. First of all, my tip, if you ever need to translate to binary and from binary, just write down all two to the power of n numbers. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, and so on. And then you can use those in the sense what you do is you take the biggest two to the power of something number that fits into your number in this example 42 then you take that bit so every bit is according like to a two to the power of n like de um, not decimal digit but bit and that bit is then one and then you subtract the number from your base number and that you repeat again and again so 42 the biggest number that uh, the biggest two to the power of something is 32 that's the biggest one that fits in so we set the 32 bit to 1 and we subtract 32 minus 42 we get 10 so after that 16 doesn't fit so we set a set this bit to 0 8 fits so we set 8 to 1 and like the 8 bit to 1 we subtract 8 from 10 we get 2 then we continue the whole thing the 4 doesn't fit into 2 so we set it to 0 2 perfectly fits into 2 very nice. So we set the 2 bit to 1, 2 minus 2 is 0, and then the bits afterwards still have to be set to 0, even though, yeah. So 1 doesn't fit into 0, so we set the bit to 0, and that we just write from biggest bit to lowest bit, of course, down, and we uh, get the same solution. So we must have done everything right. Yeah. Let's continue. Translating from binary, it's just the 2 to the power of something variant but backwards, which I like to use. We just get every bit that is 1 in the number, and then we basically do the bit number and 2 to the power of the bit position kind of and add those toga together though always remember the leftmost uh, the rightmost bit excuse me the smallest bit is to the to the power of zero to the power two to the power of zero is one and so that fits so in this case with this number we have two to the power of zero which is here plus 2 to the power of 2, so we have 0, 1, 2, that's the second bit, and 3, 4, 2 to the power of 4 also is a 1 bit, which we also have, and now those 3 we add them together as 32 plus 4 plus 2 equals 38, so we just translate it like this. Now we go shortly a little bit into hexadecimal. If you are doing computer science, you most likely will have to do things in hexadecimal. Why hexadecimal? They are really useful. Hexadecimal is basically like base 10, but we have 16 states, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
10, 11, 13, 14, 15. Goes up to 15 and only after the 15 we go to the next digit. And since we do not have any numerals for 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, we you choose A, B, C, D, E, F. Usually it's capital letters because there's also other new numeral systems that technically would work, uh, use different types, but that just doesn't matter. Most programming languages use capital letters. Sometimes others work as well. And the nice part of, about hexadecimal, it is really easy to translate into binary. So every hexadecimal dig digit is always it transfers always into four binary digits and you can just continue on with that. You don't have to bother with like uh, 10 being five digits and nine being five digits, but eight being only four digits. No, uh, I messed something up. Seven being four digits, eight being nine, uh, seven being three digits and eight being four digits and it's kind of no real collaboration with there no real things you can tell where you can tell how many digits we have with hexadecimal it's basically you always have four times the digits than your hexadecimal number and every hexadecimal digit exactly translates onto four of the binary digits you don't have to bother with the digit before or afterwards or anything of that. So we just simply, if we translate, we take the C. C is, now I need to think about what C is again. Uh, 10 is A, B, 11, 12. 12, we just write 12 in binary. B is 11, we write 11 in binary. And A is 10 and we write 10 in binary. Also, remember always if you have less than, uh, if you have a four here in example, but you're in hexadecimal, just you have only three digits in that case, just write zeros in front of it until you have four digits. So four would be zero, one, zero, zero in hexadecimal. Hexadecimal four would zero one, be zero, one, zero, zero in decimal just so you know. Now we go into negative numbers. Now scores are quite a bit difficult in binary or especially in computer science because well on paper we could just write an, a minus in front of it and it would be a negative number but problem is in a computer we do not have that. We don't have a minus sign that we can put anywhere. We can just put ones and zeros any, everywhere. And that's quite annoying in a way. And there is different things how to try and solve this. And we start with MSB, the most significant bit. The most significant bit is the first bit is the sign. If it's a zero, it's a positive number. If it's a one, it's a negative number. So what you would do if you have the number 42, one zero, one zero, one zero, if it's a signed number and it's still positive, it would, you would put a zero in front of it. And if you would want to have a negative 42, you would put a, a one in front of it. A little problem. We can't calculate like normal with that. If we would, for example, calculate minus 42 minus 2 we would get minus 40 which is wrong we need to get minus 44 so another variant that was tried is the 1k variant where we just simply to make the numbers negative we flip the bits it is still the same the most significant bits shows our sign basically zero is still positive one is negative so if we have a positive number we always need to have a one a zero in front of it and in this case we still can't calculate like normal 
also, if you think a little bit about it, the number zero, it is doubled also, of course, in this variant also doubled because one zero equals minus zero, zero zero would equal uh, plus zero, which is, well, not that nice. And here also one 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 would equal zero and zero 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 would also equal zero, but we only have actually one zero and it doesn't have any sign value. So that's not nice. Also, yeah, we can't calculate like, like normal. So what's the use? of this type of number uh, of display why even explain it very simple 2k that's the variant that's mostly used what we do is we flip the bits and add one because like that we actually can calculate like normal so 42 minus 2 in this case finally is minus 44 we can calculate like normal and also we don't have a double zero we don't have two times zero in our numbers which is nice because we do not waste anything in that case and it just works in a sense yeah that's the nice part about two case numbers two k numbers and how computers display negative numbers of course technically there's also floating floating point numbers but those are not relevant for the things we are going to be doing here so i'm not going to be explaining them in this series they do work a little bit different because yeah they need to be a bit compli um, they are a bit more complicated since it is really hard to put floating point numbers like numbers where the decimal can be at any point but we just have to basically deal with that but it's not somehow important for our thing here so we just are finished and yeah in this picture in this all slides I didn't use any pictures because it was just mathematics I know you hate it I hate it too it is the probably most boring episode for now Should not be the most boring episode because I think logic is still a, quite a bit better but afterwards it's gonna be getting really interesting yeah so the video is now over goodbye I hope you had a fun time be away now. Do I still drink some coffee? I don't know. Maybe. Hmm? Oh, you're still here. Why are you still here? You just heard me rambling to myself. You can just just go now, okay? It's it's fine. I'm just, just gonna sit here a bit and think about life, the universe and all the rest. And go have your fun. Yeah. I don't know, do some homework or something. Just just do your things. Goodbye.